Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. The WBC confirms that Jamal Charlo is Gennady Golovkin's number one mandatory and they add Canelo back to the rankings. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now the WBC, shout out to them. And on their website, they made some updates. Also, they have a, a banner that says Mental Health Awareness Month. So make sure you guys take that serious. There was obviously a recent suicide in the celebrity world. Rest in peace to Anthony Bourdain. Now on the WBC's website, they let you know what's going on and kind of give you a snapshot of the middleweight division. They said the champion is Gennady Golovkin from Kazakhstan, right? You guys will be able to see this on the screen. He won the title May 18th, 2016. His last title defense was May 5th, 2018 obviously against Vanas Matarosa right underneath it it says interim champion Jamal Charlo and then if you look underneath that the number one listed person in the rankings is Saul Canelo Alvarez now he was removed from the rankings because he hadn't completed or entered the Vada clean boxing program at the point in time he was suspended he still is suspended till mid-August so, as a result, if you're not in that program, I don't know if they'll rank you. I don't think they'll rank you. But, since that point, Canelo has decided and elected to do year-round VADA testing. So, he's allowed back into the rankings. And you see, they put him back. And they have Saul Alvarez, number one. Danny Jacobs, number two. Demetrius Andre, number three. Very interesting time for the middleweight division. Now, the reason I say that is because at one point in time, Gennady Golovkin seemed to be the big bad wolf if you will he seemed to be the the guy who was most dominant other guys were working like daniel jacobs was working he started stringing up some peter quillins and sergio Moore wins then he gave golovkin a tough fight but from let's say golovkin's hbo debut where he beat gregor Prosca to gave out around that time there weren't too many players that looked like they could rival or challenge golovkin now it looks like there's some people that at least in the middleweight division would give him a good fight. So a lot has changed since the, the Rosado Adama days in the middleweight division. I think it's great. I love when new players emerge like the welterweight division. We have a fight tonight with Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn. He's a new face in the welterweight division. Very accomplished in his previous divisions, 35 and 40. Undisputed at 140. Let's see what he can do at 147. So I'm loving the middleweight division. Tough decisions and and some things that I don't quite understand with Team Golovkin, how they've negotiated that. I've been on record saying that. And just simple stuff like why'd you fight Vanas Matarosin and you created this virtual timeline for 90 days to start to begin before you had to face your mandatory because you chose to save the date after Canelo ruined that particular fight and the fight was ultimately scrapped between Canelo Alvarez and Golovkin too. Then you, you chose to fight a guy from 154 coming off of a loss and coming off a two-year layoff from out of the division, which created a snowball effect. Devrinchenko, Lou DiBella, Andre Rozier, that, that whole team, they're like, wait a minute, how can you fight Vonis, but you won't fight us? We are mandatory. IBF said, hey, he has a good point. We'll give you this exception because you didn't create the situation, the, the fallout with Canelo, but you got to show us in writing within a certain amount of time that you're going to fight Dervinchenko next. He is your mandatory, and you're, you're due for a mandatory defense. You got to fight him by late August. Golovkin didn't sound like his team had any intention of fulfilling that, so they just fought Vonis and got stripped of the belt. Now you lose you lose points or lose bargaining chips at the negotiating table, which you're already struggling with. Oscar De La Hoya said 50-50 over my dead body, basically. He's like, you're not getting 50-50. Canelo's the true star. He has the numbers to support it. The train is left. 
Now you get stripped. Golovkin gets stripped. They say the train has left, and we're going to start doing interviews and, and speaking with other teams like Daniel Jacobs. We'll make those fights. We don't, we don't need you, and we will prove it. Now, all of a sudden, Triple G, his promoter, comes out and says, hey, we don't want 50-50 anymore. We will budge. But for the weeks prior to them being stripped of the IBF, they were hell-bent on getting 50-50, and Golden Boy told him from the jump, you're not getting that with Canelo, right? But all of a sudden, he gets stripped and says, oh, hey, we'll take 45. You know what I mean? So I, I just don't think they're in a position to really call the shots. Golden Boy has been the A-side. They know they're the A-side. And there's some tough decisions for Triple G. Like I said, the walls are closing in. He's surrounded by tough mandatories, tough fights in or around his division. Uh, Gilberto Ramirez, if we look up to 168, has been saying he wants to fight. But if we look at his current division, Saul Alvarez, that's a difficult rematch. Danny Jacobs, I th he gave you a tough first fight. That would be a difficult rematch. Demetrius Andres says he wants to give you a fight. He's a tough Olympian southpaw tricky style then your mandatories jamal charlo danny jacobs billy joe saunders look very crafty versus david lemieux right dervinchenko wants to work but you kind of got the monkey off your back with the dervinchenko because you got stripped of the belt so now you don't really have to fight dervinchenko who will probably pay you the least so very interesting stuff the wbc did tell team golovkin hey we'll make an exception for boxing for the canelo fight but we urge you to take it. And if you don't take it, you have to fight your other mandatory or our mandatory, which is Jamal Charlo, as you guys seen on the screen earlier. And if he doesn't do that, then what's going to happen? The same thing the IBF did. They're going to strip him. And if Golovkin gets stripped of two belts in one year for failure to fight mandatories, that's going to look terrible. So it's looking like the avenue he probably will or should take is to fight Canelo if they even want to to fight you anymore. You know what I mean? They might really be serious about the Daniel Jacobs. I don't know. I don't know if they would put Canelo in there with him off of a, a year layoff. But if they are serious, then that's going to create more issue for Gennady Golovkin because you're going to have to find a dance partner. And if it's not Charlo, then you run the risk of getting stripped of a second belt in one year again for failure to fight a mandatory and that would be a terrible look actually i can't think of anybody who was one click away from being undisputed and then they got stripped of two belts in a year in the history of boxing i can't think of that ever happening so you really don't want that to happen i wouldn't imagine for i mean for public relations reasons especially since the love can at a point in time a lot of people referred to him as the boogeyman ESPN said he's the top 25 fighter in the last 25 years. ESPN, their last pound for pound list, I believe, had him pound for pound number one. So to see a pound for pound number one evade multiple mandatories in one year, that would be a terrible look as far as I'm concerned. So the most money is clearly the Canelo rematch. And the same could be said for Canelo, but Canelo can make money good money because he's a seller because he's an a side no matter who he fights within reason not necessarily like if he fights like a gary spike o'sullivan because he's not really heard of but then again it's canelo he probably still made good money when he fought liam smith because there was fifty one thousand people who showed up to texas so um i think canelo has the leverage here he's back in the rankings let me let me know what golovkin should do next should he just bow down and and ex accept the offer or should he go another route? Maybe fight Charlo, fight Billy Joe Saunders. The only problem now is if he fights Billy Joe Saunders, is no longer for Undisputed. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego Signing. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.